The city of Detroit has faced social justice issues for decades. One of the forms social justice can take is environmental justice. Dr. Robert Bullard, who largely established the field of environmental justice, defines environmental justice as the principles that all communities are entitled to equal protection, access, and enforcement of a healthy environment. Environmental injustice is very prevalent in Detroit, especially due to the city's background in racial discrimination. In the 1930s, in an effort to ease the financial burden of the Great Depression, the Federal Home Owners Loan Corporation, or HOLC, was created to expand home buying opportunities. The HOLC gave out over a million loans to families across the United States, including Detroit. Banks and mortgage lenders determined who would receive loans based on the neighborhood grades provided by the HOLC. Racial and ethnic identity and class of residents contributed as the basis of a neighborhood's grade results. You can see the grading system here, where grade A areas are mostly wealthy and white areas, while grade D areas have, quote, detrimental influences from an undesirable population. This is an example of the HOLC's analysis and description of low-grade neighborhoods. The HOLC gave areas the lowest grade due to unreliable class of tenants, Negro streets, Negro low-cost housing, infiltration of Druze and Negroes, and heavy concentration of low-grade aliens. This resulted in a dramatic divestment in areas where the majority of residents were African American or immigrants. These red line neighborhoods were then intentionally zoned and targeted for less desirable projects to be built there, such as highways, manufacturing facilities, risk management plants, and hazardous waste plants. The legacies of these discriminatory practices are still present in Detroit today. Historically, red line neighborhoods now have a higher percentage of impervious surfaces, such as asphalt, concrete, and almost half the tree cover of non red line neighborhoods. Trees reflect and lower heat, while impervious surfaces absorb and radiate the heat that hits them. When an area has high levels of impervious surfaces and low level of tree canopy, heat ions can form. Urban heat islands in previously redlined areas are so bad that on average, neighborhoods that were redlined are 5 degrees hotter than ones that were not, but the discrepancy can reach up to 20 degrees in some areas. The people who are now living in previously redlined districts are still predominantly peoples of color, low income, and a high vulnerability to heat. The National Community Investment Coalition reports that 74% of neighborhoods the HOLC graded as high risk are low to moderate income today. Additionally, most of the HOLC graded hazardous areas, nearly 64%, are minority neighborhoods now. This is NASA satellite imagery of the average surface temperature in southeastern Michigan. The map clearly shows that downtown Detroit, an area with large amounts of impervious surfaces and predominantly people of color, is up to 5 degrees hotter on average than the surrounding wealthy white neighborhoods. A potential solution to this problem is increasing the city's urban canopy. This is a map of Detroit's canopy in 2020. The city's area is about 24% green canopy, far below the American Forest recommendation of 40%. Poorer areas that have barely any canopy at all must be targeted for foresting effort. Nonprofit groups such as the Greeting of Detroit, American Forests, and Detroit Future City have all planted tens of thousands of trees in Detroit. These groups have focused their efforts on planting trees beside sidewalks and the roads of poorer neighborhoods. While planting trees along sidewalks and roads is critical to improving environmental justice, the creation and restoration of large green parks is even better. Because of Detroit's previous financial problems, it has very few parks, and the ones it does have are often poorly maintained. While the average American city has 18% of its area dedicated towards parks, Detroit only has 6%. Parks and urban gardens are even better at reducing urban heat islands because as they are added, they also remove vast lots of impervious surfaces that were there before. To help address these concerns, the city of Detroit has implemented many policies in recent years. In 2017, the Office of Sustainability was created to lead the city's sustainability initiatives and create a healthy, green, vibrant, and accessible neighborhoods. Detroit has also begun construction on the Joe Louis Greenway a 27 and a half mile long greenway for recreation and travel across the city. The greenway would connect 23, mostly low income, neighborhoods all across the city. The chosen route heavily considers the housing gaps, economic barriers, and limitations of access to quality green space of the surrounding areas so the greenway could maximize quality of life increases for Detroit residents. During an interview, Jack Akinlesotu, 
director of the Office of Sustainability for Detroit, spoke on what Detroit is doing to improve environmental justice, saying, we are definitely trying to mitigate greenhouse gas emissions. We are doing a lot of projects trying to figure out how we can make our buildings more energy efficient. We have a big solar renewable energy project we are working on right now. The director also spoke on improving the lacking canopy coverage in Detroit, saying, We just applied for a grant from the EPA to deploy more trees and more canopy throughout the city. It's definitely a big initiative. He also said that one of the city's main objectives is to follow the Paris Climate Accord, saying, The mayor is committed to the Paris Climate Accord and trying to do whatever we can to help the city reach those goals. Detroit's work is not finished. If Detroit is to correct its past of environmental injustice and create an equitable and prosperous community, then it must continue and expand upon these initiatives for years to come in the hope of creating a better future for its residents.